What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be checking out a brand new television set from Sony. This is the brand new 85X95L. So shout out to the guys at Sony for sending this over for me to review. Thank you guys. If you guys wanna pick up this TV, I will leave some links for it down below in this video's description. So let's get this thing unboxed. This is, as you can see, a really big television set. This is actually going to replace my 85 inch X95K from last year. We are gonna take a, a look at it and see if there are any improvements from last year's model. But when you first take this out of the box, make sure you cut the straps, open the top first, because this is where you're going to find both of your feet. So both metal feet, which we're gonna put on. These are the little beauty plates or the back covers, setup guide. And here we have the manual as well as the batteries. And then on the opposite end, we have the remote control. Once you go through all the setup, you'll be taken to the Google TV homepage, which is pretty standard if you've ever used Google TV before. And if we're talking about the UI, this is just as snappy as last year's X95K. In fact, it feels exactly the same. So let's go ahead up top and just check out some of the settings here. So in the upper right hand corner, we've got your notification drawer. This is where you got your screen saver, your picture mode, accessibility settings, input and Wi-Fi. Now jumping over to the settings, we're just gonna take a look at the relevant ones to the television set. First option here is channel and inputs. Here's the cable antenna setup. Next section is your streaming channel setup, which we've got Google TV, Google Play Movies, and Zumo Play. Next section is your preferences. We've got captions, interactive application, your update guide and standby or network standby. This will update your TV guide, your on-screen menus, and then authentication for TV services. Next section is the info banner. This has the little display, your lower thirds, for if you're watching television, that'll give you some extra info. For external display, this is where you'll set up your external devices connected through the television. So if you wanna use your TV's remote to control the external device, this is where you would do that here. Under Manage Inputs, this is where you can show or hide specific inputs as well as rename them. This section is the Cable Satellite TV Box Setup, Bravia Sync Settings. So if you have this connected to a Sony compatible soundbar or an AVR, you can use the television's remote to control that specific device. Under HDMI Signal Format, this is where you will go in and change it from standard over to enhanced format in order to get support for 4K HDR. And that's for all four settings Although for HDMI 3 and HDMI 4, this is where you'll change your support for either Dolby Vision or enhanced VRR. So if you've got a video game system or a console connected up to the television set and you want to get that variable refresh rate, this is where you would go and select that. And that is available for HDMI 3 and HDMI 4. The next one is the TV button shortcut. So by pressing the TV button, this will take you over to the default selection that you have chosen on the right side of the screen there, either HDMI 1, 2, 3, or 4, or video. And then the next section is your display and sound. Here we've got your picture settings, which we'll come back and take a look at later. 
We've got your screen settings here, which you can change your wide mode, your four x three default. And then you've got your auto display area and then screen position. This is grayed out because we're not actually watching pertinent content. And then under sound settings, we've got acoustic auto calibration, which will automatically calibrate the sound of the television set to your room. And also if you have the supported optional Bravia cam, it can use that to auto adjust the picture and sound using the optional camera. Then we've got a few different sound modes. We've got standard, dialogue, cinema, music, sports, and then Dolby Audio. Under sound customization, we've got surround mode, which you can turn on or off or keep it on auto. This is supposed to give you a 5.1 channel surround-like experience using the television speakers. Next option is the surround effect, which you can adjust by changing the slider. And then under equalizer, we get a seven band EQ from 125 Hertz up to 8K. And then the last option here is the dialogue enhancer. We've got the volume level per specific input, advanced auto volume, the balance left and right, TV position, which is either tabletop or wall mount, depending on how you have your TV set up. Then you can reset all the settings. And that is it for the television settings. Now, as far as apps, this does support 4K Dolby Vision and Atmos if the app supports it. So for instance, this is Netflix. We can see here for the movie 65, this does support 4K Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Now, maybe the coolest app that comes built into the television set is gonna be the Bravia Core app. Now, if you do purchase one of these Sony TV sets, they'll give you five free credits, which you can see in the bottom lower corner here. I've already used one, so I've got four left. Now, the one thing with this particular app is that it'll, it'll stream up to 80 megabits per second, which is very close to physical media. And this does support IMAX, 4K HDR, DTS, or Dolby Atmos, and it's got Pure Stream, which again, will stream up to 80 megabits per second. So you do have to have a pretty quick internet connection. Now, while you are watching content and you wanna to get to the settings, all you gotta do is tap on the settings button in the upper right-hand corner of the remote control. This will bring up your settings bar in the lower half of the screen. So as you can see here, this being an IMAX enhanced stream, this automatically kicks it into the IMAX enhanced mode. And you've got a few different other presets here. We've got the IMAX enhanced, we've got cinema, standard, vivid, which makes everything super bright and blown out. And then the last option is going to be custom. Now, if you do want to change some settings here, you can go into the picture settings. And you can see here, we've got the picture modes once again. You can see how that changes as we cycle through. You can reset the picture settings for IMAX Enhance. There's a Bravia Core calibrated mode. We've got the ambient light sensor, which I've got turned off for now. We've got under brightness, we've got your brightness, contrast, gamma. Under HDR tone mapping, right now it's under gradation preferred, or you can choose brightness preferred. We've got black level adjust, black adjust. Under advanced contrast enhancer, we've got off, low, medium, and high. For the best results, you'd probably want to keep this on off. Under auto local dimming, we've got either off, low, medium, and then high. The preferred one would be the medium setting. Under peak luminance, we've got high, medium, low, and then off. For HDR content, you're probably gonna to wanna to keep that on high. Then we've got your color settings. Under clarity, we've got sharpness, reality creation, which is on manual, or you can turn this off, or you can keep it on auto. Here we've got noise reduction, digital noise reduction, smooth gradation, which is on low, off, medium, or high. And under motion, this is where you'll find your motion flow. If you wanna get that smooth soap opera effect, you can customize this. We've got Cinemotion, we've got it on high, low, or you can turn it off. Then video signal, HDR mode, you got auto, HDR10, HLG, or you can turn that off. Then under color space, We've got auto, BT709, DCI, and 2020. We're just gonna keep that on auto. And then if you have the proper calibration tools, you can go under here and then calibrate this yourself. 
And just the disclaimer, I am not a professional calibrator, so I will not be messing with any of these settings. Now let's take a look at how the 95L compares to last year's 95K. You're probably familiar with this shot off the Spears and Munsell disc. This screenshot is from the 2000 nit demo. And as far as tone mapping and handling bright scenes, these look nearly identical. If it wasn't for the slight difference in color temperature and them sitting next to each other, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. This looks great at 2000 nits and below, but once we go above that to 4000 nits, that's when things start getting too bright to keep all that highlight detail intact. You can also see that both sets do have a little bit of vignetting around the edges, which is that slight darkening. You won't notice this on normal content unless you're watching a lot of bright solid colors. Moving over to something darker, these both handle shadow detail fantastic, and once again would be very hard to tell them apart. As far as bright specular highlights, this is from Ant-Man Quantumania, which has a nice mixture of bright elements against a dark background. They both keep the highlight detail intact without getting all blown out. It's hard to tell in this screenshot, but these flames both have excellent color gradation, and if you were to see this in person, it's crazy bright. This guy's head is also extremely bright, but also has this fiery swirl right in the center of his face. I've seen some displays that would lose that bright detail and make this guy's head a bright white ball, but that is not the case with these. As far as differences between the two, I do think the 95L is punchier in handling these bright elements, so it has a little bit more pop and vibrancy. The black levels and shadow detail is also a touch darker, which you can see in the background right here. The 95K looks a little raised in comparison. Now I am using the same settings on both TVs, so I'm not juicing up one over the other. Where things really start looking good for the 95L is with the blooming control. If you look at the upper right corner where the flame goes off the screen, the letterbox bar does have a lighter glow on the 95K, whereas the 95L, while it isn't OLED perfect black, is a lot better than the 95K. Now this next shot is what really tripped up the 95K's backlight. This is from the Ricky Gervais Netflix special. I think it's pretty easy to see how much better the backlight control is on the 95L. I don't want to say it's unwatchable on the 95K, but the blooming is very noticeable. The halo around Ricky is gone on the 95L and all around those little blue lights, but there is still some faint blooming around the red lights on the right side of the screen, so it's not perfect, but it is a big upgrade if you have the 95K. At the time of this video, the 85X95L is selling for $5,300. This is Sony's latest and greatest mini LED TV with a lot of great features such as Google Assistant, IMAX Enhance, and Netflix calibrated support. Now while it isn't a giant leap in performance over the X95K, I think having better control of the backlight to keep the blooming to near non-existent is this TV's biggest selling point if you're coming from last year's model. If you enjoy the look of an LCD LED TV, but wish it had OLED levels of black or close to it, then the X95L should definitely be on your short list of contenders. It's so good that it's going in my living room. Now, if you'd like to pick up one of these TVs, you can find links down below in this video's description. So what are your thoughts on the new X95L? Do you think it's worth the upgrade over the X95K? If so, leave a comment and let me know. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys again in the next video.